What a wonderful day to worship our Lord. Please stand and sing with us. Beautiful day. 
we were going to talk about how we're named in the waters to love that we're enough and that everything else is for naught. Uh, if you're visiting today, uh, fill out one of those yellow cards and, and pass it through. Uh, and when the offering plate comes around, that'll let us know who you are. That would be great. Uh, if you aren't visiting today, then maybe you got a name tag you could wear. I see Jane's got her name tag on right here. There we go. I think that's the only one I see, except power. Yeah. Oh, okay, best lace. A few of you claiming them. Put on an name tag. It helps us uh, be better, uh, be better community. Let's get, let's sing this last song for Baptist. sermon today, and she's on the guest mic, Matt, not Liz's mic, the guest mic. Break. 
Christmas, and I'm sure you talked to them about all the new things that you got, right? Lots of new things you got at Christmas time, right? Well, I brought some things that I got that are new, and one thing I'm super excited about are these new clothes. Do you guys get new clothes? Yes. Is it fun to get new clothes? No. Some of you are like, no. Well, I love getting new clothes because there's new clothes, they don't have holes in them. They are soft, they're crump comfy, they fit right, they don't look old and rugged, they're new, right? Yeah. And I brought one thing that my, sorry, my daughter got that we haven't opened up yet, that I think that you probably like better than new clothes, is what? New toys, right? So I brought her new toy, it's still in the packaging, it's a cute little tea set, isn't that cute? I bet some of you might have had something like this. New toys is fun because you still have all the pieces. None of them are missing. It's not broken. It has these new lights and new sounds. And the color is bright and it's shiny and it's new. New things are nice, right? We enjoy getting new things. And today we're talking about something that is new. It's a new life. And what I mean by that is a new life in Christ. When we live our day-to-day -day life, we do things that are bad and things that are icky, bad choices, and we sin and we lie and we cheat. We do all these things that God isn't very pleased with us about. And in the Bible, there's a man named John. And he went all throughout the country because people came to him and said, Hey, John, I've done all these bad things. And I've made bad choices, and God isn't very happy with me. What can I do to get rid of these sins? And so John said, well, you need to repent. You need to say you're sorry for your sins. You need to ask God for forgiveness. And then I want you to come to me, and I'm going to baptize you in the Jordan River. And that's exactly what these people did. When you're dirty, what do you do? You take a shower, right? You get all the dirt off of you. And when you're baptized, that's what it's like. Imagine if you have all this dirt all over you from all the bad choices you make. When you are baptized, you're washed clean. And today we're talking a lot about how Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. And the reason why we're able to be baptized is because Jesus came. He died on the cross for our sins. And he rose again from the dead so that we could be made new in him wash clean and all of our sins can be taken away. Is that a pretty cool thing? I'm very grateful for that. So let's pray to God. Put your hands in the air. Wiggle your those fingers for me. Give me a big clap. Put your hands in your lap and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the baptism and the new life you have created for us. Please forgive all our sins, all our sins. And, help us start and help us start a new life in you. New life in you. Amen. Amen. Awesome. You guys ready to come down to Sunday school with me? Yeah. Okay, let's go.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. While uh, Pastor Mac makes his way up to the, uh, up to the lectern, I, I want to give thanks. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Pastor Max, a, a member of our church, a retired Methodist pastor, active uh, part of this place. And uh, it's been a very uh, busy week here at Messiah for, for very sad reasons. And so on Sunday last week, uh, I called Mac and I asked if he could preach today on Baptism of Our Lord Sunday in order to share the, the burden of this week. And, and of course, Mac uh, suggests. Welcome, Mac. Will you pray with me? Gracious Father, speak to us where we live. Amen. Remember your baptism. Um, I don't remember much of my own baptism. Uh, I was baptized as an infant, and I can kind of conjure a picture in my mind. I was the sixth of seven kids, so my brother and four of my sisters would have been there and my mother would have been in her Sunday go to meet and best. And my father would have been in a suit with a tie with his chest puffed out. He always puffed out his chest when he uh, wore a suit. And uh, they would have done their best to get all their lines right and answer all the questions properly. And I try also to conjure a picture of what it was like at the baptism of Christ. Uh, there would have been, I like to think, both sides of the river crowded with people because I like to think that when the heavens opened and God spoke and the dove descended and God recognized Jesus as his son with whom he was well pleased, someone was there to hear it. When Carl asked me to preach, in all honesty, I got all excited and I wrote the sermon on Monday and had it all in place and had even rehearsed it a couple times. And then I found myself Wednesday morning at one of my favorite places. Uh, that was uh, a lie. I allow myself three lies a day, and that was my first for today. I uh, found myself at the, the eye doctor, and when you go to the eye doctor, you get eye drops, and then you wait for 45 minutes, and get eye drops, and wait for 45 minutes, and get eye drops, and wait for 45 minutes, and see the doctor. And if you're lucky, you find someone to talk to. And if you're really lucky, you find someone to listen to so you don't have to talk. And I found someone to listen to. I found a, a lady who uh, um, was somewhere between the age of 87 and 93. In the course of our one-sided conversation, I was given three ages. Uh, and the conversation could have ended abruptly if I had not had enough sense to keep my mouth shut because it started with her saying, do I look 90? Well, actually, uh, she looked well over 90, but I kept my mouth shut. But in the course of the conversation, she told me of a lesson she had learned from a nun when she was very young. The nun told her that some bad things are gonna happen in the course of your life. But when you get to heaven, you're gonna understand all of those things and they're gonna make sense. 
And she said, I hung on to that for most of my life. And then I realized that that didn't make sense at all because when I get to heaven, I'm going to be fully in the presence of God. And it isn't going to matter what all of those things mean because I'm going to be fully in God's presence and all of those things aren't going to matter at all. And then the discussion started. She started going through all these horrible things that had happened in her life. Now, those of you who don't know me probably don't know that I'm a little bit competitive. So when she started rattling off all these things that had happened in her life, I felt challenged to come up with some things that had happened in my life. She said, I went through this, 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 and this, and I responded as politely with I, as I could with, oh yeah, well I went through this and this and this and this and this. And she kept coming back with other things and I kept coming back with other things. And when I got home, I thought I would make a list on the outside chance that I would run into this sweet dear lady again when I went to the doctor. So I came up with this list. And I'm gonna show that little old lady the next time I see her. <laughs> I have had five knee surgeries, three of which were knee replacements. I have been cut from side to side twice. I've had brain surgery once. I've had six hernias. I have had elbow surgery. I've had my gallbladder removed. I have had both hands operated on. I have had cataract surgery. I have had shots in my eyes, Ernie, so quit complaining. I have had eye surgery. I was in a coma for two weeks, and in the process of that, I spent six weeks in a nursing home. I'm blind in my left eye and going blind in my right. I've had more tumors than I can count. Um, I was on dialysis for several months. Uh, I had my tonsils out as an adult, which was an experience because they took part of my palate and when they and my uvula. I don't have a uvula, and I think I should get a handicap sticker because I don't have that uvula. <laughs> And when they take your palate, they take part of your taste buds, and the first taste bud that comes back is cardboard, because everything tastes like cardboard. <laughs> I've had two pacemakers. I had bypass surgery, which was followed by a stroke. I've had rotator cuff surgery twice. Uh, I've had five concussions. I've had heat stroke twice. And none of that counts the times that I was thrown off horses, kicked by a cow, bit by dogs, and bit by a snake. I actually wasn't bit by a snake, I just threw that in as a tiebreaker. <laughs> now, my mother would look at that list of things and say, if you look at that list and consider your Baptism, that list of bad things that happened to you are all for naught. They count as little or nothing. If you consider your baptism, that moment, and my picture of my baptism is God cradling me in God's arms, sprinkling me with living water, filling me to the point of overflowing with the Holy Spirit and declaring, this is my son, Matt Kelly, with whom I am well pleased. In that moment, nothing else matters. In spite of my obvious brokenness, nothing else matters. In spite of my obvious, to me at least, brokenness, in that moment, I was and am completely whole. As mom would say, it counts for naught. All I can do 
is sing what is my favorite hymn. And I won't sing it to you because I love some of you. <laughs> but I will quote the first verse. My life goes on an endless song above life's lamentation. I hear that sweet, though far off hymn that hails the new creation. No storm can shake this inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep? from singing. All that is preface to this story. I was a chaplain in the Army Reserve, and I got a call that one of my troops had lost an infant child. And I happened to be in Wheeling when the call came, so I was able to go to the funeral home when they were there making arrangements for the funeral service. And when I got there, I found this young couple and some of their family in a rather distraught state because they were trying to make arrangements to pay for the funeral. And I, I guess, insinuated myself into the conversation as they were trying to figure out with their low means how they could make arrangements to pay to bury their child. I listened and said, let me make a couple phone calls. So I excused myself and started outside. And as I passed by on my way to the door, I saw a little white-haired woman sitting, weeping quietly she uh, had her own brand of beauty. She had uh, deep pock marks that had been there since her teenage years and looked as if they had burned into her face after what I surmise to be too many years in the hot sun. And her eyes were what I call barb Farmer Telly Blue, beautiful eyes that glistened with tears. And I felt like I needed to do something but didn't know what to do because I didn't know this lady. But I leaned over and kissed her on the forehead. You could do it in those days. And then I excused myself and went out and called a friend of mine who was a funeral director. We called him Fast Freddy. And we called him Fast Freddy because he was a basketball player, a very good basketball player. He was an all-state basketball player in high school. But we called him Fast Freddy because he was the only basketball player in the history of basketball player who was slower than me. So in the course of our conversation, Fast Freddy agreed to call the funeral director and make some arrangements. And he not only uh, arranged a payment plan, but he arranged to pay for the funeral for this child himself, explaining to me that Mac caskets for infants aren't that expensive. I came back into the room, passed by the little lady again, and the next conversation was where would we have the service because there were going to be too many people there for the funeral home. I again offered that I had seen a church down the street that happened to be a Methodist church and I would go down and talk to the pastor and see if we could have a service there. So I excused myself again and went down and talked to the pastor and sure they would be willing to have the service. So I came back and shared that with the family and they were pleased with that. And then the issue of what to do after the service came up. And I said, I will 
go back and talk to that pastor and see if they would let you have a gathering there. And I went and asked about it, and they would be more than willing to have the family gather there. But he said the women of the church would insist on having a meal for the family. I did mention that they were Methodists, didn't I? Just like you Lutheran women, they wanted to serve food. I came back and announced that. And to tell you the truth, I felt pretty good about myself. Well, the next day I came back to meet with the family for calling hours. And I saw the little old lady standing with the young man who had lost his child. And I uh, came to them as he motioned, excuse me, as he motioned me over and he introduced me to the woman and said, Grandma, this is Chaplain Kelly. And she reached out her hand and touched my cheek and said, you're real. And I said, nothing. And then she said, I thought you was an angel. And I don't know what I said, but if I had been paying attention, I would have seen the heavens open and heard the voice of God say, this is my son, Mac Kelly, with whom I am well pleased. I had bypass surgery followed by a stroke in the spring and was away from church for four months. And the first Sunday I came back, one of the first people to greet me was Frank Kokai. Frank had had heart issues himself and he approached me and gave me a firm hand shake. And I'm sure Frank saw the fear in my eyes because I didn't know what the future held for me. And he took compassion on this lost sinner and tried to comfort me in the pain that that fear caused for me. Now, I don't know what you people were doing, but apparently you weren't paying attention because none of you saw it. But when he extended that hand to me, the heavens opened and God spoke and he said, this is my son, Frank Kokai, with whom I am well pleased. You see, every time you extend a hand of mercy to a fellow sinner, you are remembering your baptism. And every time you're remembering your baptism, you are being doused with living water, filled to the point of overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Every time you remember your baptism, you're being cradled in the arms of a loving, merciful God. Every time you remember your baptism, you turn your back on what you perceive to be your brokenness and are, in that instant, whole again. Remember your baptism and let the angel in you shine through. Remember your baptism. God does. Amen.
and bow your head. Focus the best you can on the God who's called you beloved. So nothing else distracts you this morning. We're going to make some promises again. In these waters, God has cleansed us, let us die to this world, and invited us to live to the world God envisions, the kingdom. Everything else is for naught in the presence of God. When you were baptized, you made promises or your parents made promises to live in that relationship. And at the beginning of this new decade, I'm asking you to renew those promises. Do you reject sin, the devil, and all the empty promises of this world? Say, I reject them. You accept Christ as the revelation of God and your Savior from death. And that living apart from God is no way to live at all. If so, say, I accept Christ as my Savior. I accept Christ as my Savior. Do you promise to live your life of faith within the brothers and sisters in the body of Christ? This means to worship, to eat a meal of bread and wine among your friends of sacrifice and service. Support the ministries of one another and the ministries this community is called to share. If so, say, I promise to live my life of faith in the church. I promise to live my life of faith in the church. And you promise to grow deeper in your relationship with God by honoring the Ten Commandments, seeking the understanding of the mystery of God declared in the Trinity, studying the scripture, being a person of prayer, sharing God's love by loving your neighbor. If so, say, I promise to grow deeper this year in my relationship to God. And do you promise to use the gifts that you received in these waters from the Spirit, the dove of peace that opened up the heavens and released his love upon you? On the day you are baptized, gifts of talent that will help fix our broken creation, gifts of wealth that will help others eat and sustain the church around us, gifts of time that will be your sacrifice of love for your neighbor. If so, say, I promise to use the gifts of the Spirit. Let us lift all this up in prayer.
whose marriage is in trouble this morning, that love might be strong enough to hope. Pray for those who are financially troubled and worried, or who day to day work hard, but just don't ever seem to make enough. Bless them, Lord. And we pray for all those who are sick or ill, who are on our hearts and minds right now. We name those aloud in this space. Lord, help us rediscover the joy of being called beloved child.
Let us pray. Holy God, you've heard promises from us. You've, you've met us again in wine, water, and bread. Your spirit is in us in a powerful way. Help us trust the heavens open up as we are kind to each other in this year ahead, showing mercy and love always. Amen. We're, we're way over, to, so I apologize. It's a, but I, I'm, I'm glad people came forward. If you didn't come forward and you got questions about what happened, please see me afterwards and, and we can talk about that. I uh, have a few announcements. We are going to have a special meeting uh, right after worship for the 2021 20, uh, youth gathering in the Fellowship Hall, I assume. So, what? In Fritz Hall. Okay, all the way back in Fritz Hall. So head back to Fritz Hall if, if you're a parent of a high school kid or a parent of an eighth grader that would be a high school kid uh, in 2021 and, and hear about this great trip and, and, and what we're doing about it. I want to lift that up. I also want to uh, tell you that we need altar flowers on our altar. Uh, and uh, there's a sign-up sheet over there. It's a good way to remember an anniversary or a birthday or maybe someone's past that you want to acknowledge and put in a bulletin. And, and even more importantly, it helps our time together be more beautiful and, and, and more full. So uh, that sign-up sheet's right down that hallway if you haven't done that this year. Um, and finally, I just want to say thanks to uh, everyone who's worked so hard uh, this week uh, when you have so much going on uh, beyond just all the normal stuff like choirs practicing and praise team practicing and, and Bible studies and all that and then you, and then you do uh, the work of loving each other in the midst of our grief and worshiping and celebrating life uh, lived uh, baptized. Uh, it, it's, uh, it was a good week. Uh, thanks especially to Otter Guild, uh, to Linda and Carol and Peg who, who came and, and helped make uh, all this happen. We have one more funeral here at the church tomorrow. One I didn't announce uh, last week because it happened on Sunday actually. Ron Motor, our, our, our good friend and a longtime leader of this church, his daughter Christine died, a 56 year old woman um, on uh, Sunday. So we're going to have her funeral tomorrow here at the church at 11 o'clock. 10 to 11 will be visitation. Um, so keep that in your prayers. And, and our friend Don Epps can have a private graveside uh, on Thursday, too. So keep that in your, keep that in your prayers, too. Um, why don't we stand? Let's have our blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace.